What is up, Waffle Gang? I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more r slash am I the butthole. If you'd like to skip the initial waffle, timestamps are in the description and along the timeline below. But if you are new here, please consider, consider it. Hit that like, that subscribe, and maybe that notification bell too, as it all truly does help out the channel. And I can never express how much it actually does help. So thank you so much for doing you. And let's crack straight on with today's story. Stories. Much love, guys. Now, our first story comes from No Lingenberry. Am I the asshole for calling my boyfriend an insecure little boy after he repeated jokes that I cheated the system to get a career that pays more than his? Tim and I met in English literature class on our junior year of college, and we've been together the 10 years since. While he ended up going into IT, I stayed in the liberal arts track and ended up doing non-profit work after college when I realized I didn't actually want to be a school teacher. Just to say, we always assumed he'd out earn me by a considerate margin. Though when he made more, I always insisted we split things evenly to avoid potential resentment down the road. I've had a non-linear career path, but ended up switching to the corporate world. To make a long story short, my liberal arts degree and time doing non-profit work gave me a lot of skills that enable me to really excel professionally in some more niche areas. I recently started a new job as a consultant, making more than I'd ever anticipated. When I got the offer, I told Tim that the pay was amazing, but he didn't ask about the actual amount and I didn't want to be braggy about it, especially since I was fairly sure it was above his current income. Well, we just put in an application for a new place and in the process of having to submit our pay stubs, it becomes obvious that I make roughly 30% more than he does now. I expect him to think that this was cool since he's a feminist and he's always been super supportive of my career. But instead, he started to make increasingly harsh jabs about how I cheated the system to get where I am. That no English lit major makes more than a cybersecurity professional without cheating somehow. His major point is that I got my first job out of nepotism, which set me up to trample more qualified people who didn't have the same advantages. It's true that I got my first post-college job after being referred by a sorority sister, but it was for a non-profit work making 22K a year. Not exactly at somebody's daddy's firm. He also points out that at my first corporate job, I snagged a big promotion after volunteering to take on starting up the company's diversity, equity, inclusion program. And I'll admit that were I a white man, it's highly unlikely I would have been able to be the face of the eventually high profile diversity program. Tim also notes that I was awarded a small college scholarship for being a promising female writer when no such scholarship existed for males. But all that said, I still don't feel like I cheated the system and it makes me angry to listen to him to joke about it, especially since I grew up blue collar and worked full time while going to school full time to afford my degree. I reached a breaking point yesterday when he made a crack about how the new first woman on his team is an obvious diversity hire. I told him that his jokes about women cheating the system to get ahead aren't funny or guy talk ribbing, as he says. They make him sound like an insecure little boy. He told me I was being a naive Karen and we haven't really talked since yesterday. Did I go too far? And we'll start straight away with a reader on this one saying, not the asshole, dump him. He's sexist and toxic towards women. Imagine you have kids with him someday. What the fuck? Using people you know to find jobs is 100% normal and called networking. Cybersecurity is not some top dog where no one earns more than that field. His attitude towards your major is gross. Getting a promotion because you volunteered and showed initiative on new programs and showed interest in the company is also normal. There are plenty of scholarships out there. Winning a scholarship does not somehow mean you took advantage. And Cibola says, you don't sound like you cheated the system whatsoever and you used your skills to get a job you qualify for. So with that being said, info, why are you dating someone who has zero respect for you? And Ven K says, not the asshole. He isn't much of a feminist if he thinks you got one of your jobs or scholarship just because you're a woman. He's an insecure little boy, like you said. Porcelain Owl says, not the arsehole, but you all have some serious problems. I can't imagine being with someone for 10 years, not telling them how much money I make. Even if you split your finances and have separate accounts, it's important to know how much money you're bringing in. It sounds to me like you guys have a real problem with communication that needs to be fixed if you intend to stay with him. I wouldn't, but that's just me. I can't imagine my husband being jealous and accusatory if I made more than him. He'd be happy for me and us. 
And we're finished with Dro1232 saying, holy shit, more and more I question this Reddit group. Just because someone is insensitive about the way they joke about a topic or may be insecure and thus make poor taste jokes doesn't just mean throw the baby out with the bathwater. So many of you sound like high schoolers, which you probably are. Be a mature adult about it. Explain to him how it makes you feel and how you perceive him when he says stuff like that. Don't attack him, but try to get him to understand you. Try to understand his emotions too and ask him to explain why he feels the need to say things like that. You're in a relationship, help each other and grow. Ignore all these people that hear one out of tens of thousands of aspects of your relationship and instantly condemn it. Bit of a different comment at the end there from the rest of them, but we're gonna move on to the next story. This next story comes from a throwaway account. Am I the arsehole for kicking my brother's fiance out of my car on her engagement night? My brother's engagement dinner was last night. I don't like his fiance for several reasons. She's mean and brutally honest with her comments about my life and always tried to belittle me every chance she gets, like belittling my degree and living situation. I'm civil, though I have a bad temper and sometimes I can be mean towards those with no respect. My wife passed away from breast cancer. We bought a car and it's the first decent car we got and my wife and I didn't make a lot of money so it was a challenge to save up. It was her choice so I made sure to keep it maintained regularly. My brother's fiance made comments about it calling it a piece of junk and it hurt because it's part of mine and my wife's past. When the party was over my cousin left, was the one who got them to the restaurant and my brother didn't want to take an Uber. He wanted me to give them a ride. I said okay but his fiance stood there saying she wasn't going to ride in that piece of junk on her engagement night. I got really annoyed by this comment and my mum who was in the passenger seat did too. My brother spent 5 minutes convincing her and she finally got inside the car but didn't stop with her constant criticisms on how awful and dirty my car was and continuously calling it a piece of junk. My brother said nothing so I made eye contact via the rear view mirror and said if she called my car a piece of junk one more time she's out. I don't care if I drop her off in the middle of nowhere. My brother's fiance went quiet for a few minutes then commented on the necklace that was hanging from the rear view mirror calling it ugly and asking why I'd hang cheap ugly stuff to make this piece of junk even uglier. I fucking had it. That necklace belongs to my wife for Christ's sake. I got mad. I stopped the car and told her to shut the fuck up and get the fuck out. My brother asked if I was serious while my mum was trying to get me to continue driving. I repeatedly told her to get out but didn't so I got out and walked up to her side and opened the door for her to step out. She started crying and my brother called me nuts for acting out like that. I told both of them to get out and they did. I drove off and my mum didn't stop yelling saying I can't leave them on the street. They just got engaged and told me to turn around and pick them up but I screamed at her to stay the fuck out of it or she'll join them. She told the family what I did and my dad was pissed saying it was disgraceful to do this to my brother and his fiance and should be ashamed of myself for making a scene on their engagement night. He said I need serious help for my anger and should have just sucked it up till I got home. Mid argument I walked out leaving him talking to himself. I'm sure my brother doesn't want to see me for letting him down on a special night in his life but his fiance was being disrespectful. So was I the arsehole. Edit, she did not know that the necklace belonged to my late wife, so while she shouldn't have commented on it, I could see why she wasn't aware of its sentimental value. First off, if you ever get to see this, sorry for your loss. It, it must be incredibly tough to, to have this car, which does have sentimental value to you, the necklace, and then for it to be run down by a toxic individual. And I think you should be incredibly proud of yourself for standing up for you and your wife's legacy as well. I've never been in that situation, but I can only imagine it'd be incredibly tough. Obviously, I don't know your family background, but incredibly tough to stand up to your family like that, especially when everyone is turning against you. But I think you're absolutely right to do what you did in this scenario. And the whole excuse where people say, oh yeah, they're just very honest. No, they're honest. And then there's just being a jerk about things, right? You don't need to run down someone's car. You don't need to run down the necklace when they must known about your wife and, and your situation and getting the car and things like that. So that's not brutally honest. That's just being, an, as I said, an absolute jerk to me. So God, I find myself using phrases like jerk and stuff quite often now. <laughs> These posts are taking over my life. <laughs> oh, but let's check out some comments. And we'll start with Crayola My Brain saying, not the asshole. People who are proud of having a brutally honest personality just enjoy being cruel. You had every right to defend your deceased wife's necklace and your belongings. You'd be upset with yourself if you didn't. I'm sorry for your loss. 
and Arbar says, not the arsehole, the fact that it was their engagement party is not even relevant to this. In no way does that excuse her awful behavior. And Spiner Clerk says, not the arsehole, assuming that you left them somewhere where they could get home from and weren't in immediate danger of being eaten by a wolf. Why on earth is your brother more assertive with his fiance when trying to save $20 on an Uber than when she's cruelly insulting your sibling? And Angel says not the arse or the fact that she started crying is very manipulative. She pushed too far. Low Tech Style says, the only disgraceful thing I've read here is how your family treats your wife's legacy. Maybe the car is a piece of junk and maybe the necklace is cheap, but it has immense value to you because it belonged to your late wife and they stomped all over your feelings as well as your boundaries. And I feel like until they address that, it would be a good time to limit contact you have with all of them, unless you, and especially your wife's memory, want to continue to be the doormat for them and the butt of their jokes. Not the arsehole. And one more from Darth Celis Wallace saying, I'm proud of you. You took way too much of that shit. Fiance is like the biggest asshole. You're not the asshole. And now we shall move on to the next story. And our next story comes from mother-in-law is okay throw. Am I the asshole for taking my mother-in-laws as well as my own mum's side in a fight they had over my wife? My 32 male, wife 29 female, doesn't get along with her family. It all stems from her father who wasn't a very good person. Just to give an idea of what a disagreeable person he was, he was banned from every single car dealership in the city. He died about six years ago, just before we started dating and about four years before we got married. My wife loves her mother very much, but she's been kind of resentful towards her at the same time for not providing her with a better family life. Meanwhile, I have two great parents and I know how lucky I am to have them. Anyway, my mother-in-law recently invited my wife and I, as well as my parents, to come out to her home a couple of states away. Given that it was spring and that lockdown restrictions were lifting, we all happily took her up on the offer. We spent a couple of days there before it was time to move out. When it was time to move out, we all five, me, my wife, her mum, and both of my parents began to load up my wife and my truck. When it came time to load up the bed, my wife was working on it and my mother-in-law was helping her to try and find the right angles when a fight weirdly erupted between the two of them. My wife began to get angry at her mum for treating her like a child and said that she could figure it out without her help. My mother-in-law just said fine and threw her hands up and went back into her house. The rest of us finished. On the way further on our vacation, my wife started complaining about her mother and it seemed as if she was looking for sympathy. My father just answered, it's between you and your mum, I'm not getting involved. But I said, I think your mum was just trying to help, go easier on her. And my mum answered, I agree with him, I think you were a little mean to her. The rest of the car ride to our next destination was quiet. Was I and my mum wrong? Should I have stuck up for my wife? Am I the arsehole? I think my main issue in this one, and I may be coming at it from a wrong angle, but it seems like there was something more deeper here going on between the wife and her mum, you know, that she says she's treating her like a child. Is this something that's been going on in the past and all that kind of thing? I'm not going to go too far into that because obviously I don't know the ins and outs, but I think where you massively messed up was your thought process. Initially, you instantly went to your wife was looking for sympathy. OP's dad in this situation was like, I can see where this is going. I'm out and faded into the bushes. <laughs> but, but then you and your mum sort of ganged up on her and, 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 and turned it against her instead of asking her what's going on between the two of you and, you know, having a little empathy towards her situation. You basically turned against her so I can see where she was coming from. All, it sounded like all she wanted was someone to listen to her for a brief moment and understand where she's coming from and talking to her about it because there's clearly something deeper here. So I think that would make you the asshole in this situation. But Creep Hands Throwaway says, oh, you poor fool. You're the asshole for not realizing you're fully in the doghouse for taking your mum's and mother-in-law's side over your wife's. Even if you disagree with her, empathize, don't contradict and move the topic onto something else until you're alone and state your opinions. By contradicting her in front of your parents, you've made her look at best foolish and at worst, like she's got some sort of persecution complex. Your dad is obviously a seasoned pro because he was the only one of you sensible enough to keep his opinions to himself. And Live Laugh and Run says, you're the arsehole. And here is why. You specifically stated it seemed like she wanted you to be sympathetic. Instead, you decided to tell her she was wrong. 
You saw a snapshot of something. You had no idea of the surrounding context. Your best answer was, your mum was right and you were wrong. Honestly, I would have listened sympathetically and talked with her later about what brought on her snapping. I know what would have brought it on in my relationship, being with my mum for days who frequently tells me how to do things differently because her way is better, and when I finally get annoyed at her, I would be the bad guy. No idea if your mum and mother-in-law are like this, but this is why I only take short visits with my mum. An unhappy coffee says, I think this is the missing info. You saw your wife snap for something that you, someone who grew up in a sane happy household, seemed irrelevant and petty. However, we have no idea what your wife went through during her childhood. Is this a case of the straw that broke the camel's back after years of being infantilized? Is that how you pronounce it? Which can be common with narcissist parents. I think that changes the whole thing. If your wife had a bad childhood and you know the details of it and you still downplayed her feelings, you are definitely the arsehole. And Webby Vanderquack says, you're the arsehole, three of you, you and your parents ganged up on her. That wasn't fair. All you needed to do was listen and sympathize with her frustration, not decide who was at fault. She wasn't asking for a verdict from you all. To be fair though, I thought the dad pretty much stayed out of it, but Realistic Voice 8 says, you're the arsehole, you admit yourself that you don't really know what sparked the fight and instead of talking about it and trying to understand, you dismiss her as looking for sympathy. And then you and your mum basically reprimanded her, so of course she was quiet. You don't need to fully stick up for her if she was in the wrong. You can tell her if she was in the wrong. You don't owe her unquestioning fealty. What you do owe her is to hear her out and try to understand where she's coming from before telling her she is wrong. You have no idea why your wife got upset and you didn't seem to care. And that's the part that makes you the arsehole. And now we move on to our next story. And our next story comes from a throwaway account, of course. Am I the asshole for telling my boyfriend's friends I'd rather not vacation with them and that's their gluttonous? Oh dear. I, 23 female, have been with my boyfriend, 28 male, for four years now. For context, these friends were friends with boyfriend for years before he met me. Over the years, they've become my friends as well as we're all part of the same circle now, about 14 people. For obvious reasons, I'm not as close with them as my spouse is. Now here's where it all starts. Back in February 2019, my boyfriend and I decided to spend a weekend at Disneyland. It was originally going to be just us two, but he had asked if I'd be okay if he invited some friends, about six of the 14 people. Of this six, four were guys and two were women, and they were girlfriends of two of the guys. These four guys are my boyfriend's closest friends in the group. I agreed since I thought that it would be fun, but I was wrong. They, referring to the four guys, didn't want to go on any rides or see any of the shows. They only wanted to eat at the various Disney restaurants. To be frank, I don't care much for eating theme park food, as tasty as it may be. The food is overpriced and I just don't feel comfortable eating so much fattening food. The other women in the group didn't care much for the food either, but they sat along while their partners ate. This would have been fine if they let my boyfriend and I go off and enjoy ourselves, but they guilted him into not leaving them behind. We want to ride X ride together. I did not enjoy my Disney weekend very much. Fast forward to this past weekend, the original Disney 6 were at our place. My boyfriend brought up that we're planning a little getaway near the end of summer. One of the guys said he'd love to join us and the others followed. Before I could say actually, it's just a couple getaway for the two of us. My boyfriend said, sure, sounds great. I paused and then said to the group, to be honest, I prefer if, if you all didn't come. My boyfriend's closest friend asked why. I didn't want them to come and I said, I just think we have different holiday priorities as evidenced by Disney. He then followed up with, oh, you didn't have fun at Disney. I said, no, being gluttonous is not how I want to spend the vacation. It's okay if you do, but it's clear we're just not compatible to holiday anymore. The rest of the night was awkward and quiet. After they left, my boyfriend said I was being a diva and out of line. Now, this is a weird one, and I think it could go a couple of ways, simply because Opie was totally right in their feelings that they want a couple's getaway and, and all this kind of thing. They was right up, I think they was okay right up to the point of saying gluttonous, which by definition is excessively greedy. 
So you're saying that they're excessively greedy, which is an insult in itself, in my opinion. And it's like, why Why did you, everything that you could have chosen? Why have I got my hands in the air right now? If everything that you could have chosen, you chose, an ex, you chose a gluttonous. You called them gluttonous. I mean, come on now. And whilst that it may have been true, they may have been excessively greedy whilst they was there. It's what they wanted to do. And, you know, you weren't forced into that situation. You... you you and your boyfriend are both adults and can make your own decision while you're there as well. I'm not I'm not totally forgiving the friends for, you know, for if they were being manipulative in this situation, but you can make your own decisions and say, look, we don't want to be in the restaurant. And I do question some of your your boyfriend's behavior as well, that he's just so quick to say, Oh yes, you can come on our couples, our couples retreat, or yes, we'll do exactly what you want without taking your feelings into consideration. I'm not totally calling OP the arsehole here because because I do understand the feelings where she's coming from it's just the the tact that she used in, in in this particular situation but let's break it down one final time i'm gonna go with and everyone sucks here yes it's a lame one i know everyone sucks here but simply because friends were trying to get themselves invited on your couple's getaway you know which is is pretty bold of them in my opinion i don't think i would step up and say oh i want to come <laughs> kind of thing when someone's saying they're going to have a little getaway i think the language is there saying you know that's a couple's break the boyfriend you know saying yeah great straight away without talking to you first yourself for having no tact and calling everyone gluttonous that's what i'm going with right now <laughs> i might be wrong but hey that's what i'm sticking with but fleet dancer says you're the arsehole how to keep friends i want this to be a romantic getaway for just the two of us but we should all hang out again soon how to lose friends Fuck no, I don't want a vacation with you lazy fat asses. Yuck, guess which one you picked. And the judgy witch says everyone sucks here. I think his friends inviting themselves on your holiday is quite rude. Your boyfriend sucks for accepting their self-invite on your behalf without discussion. You suck for having no tact. You should have spoken to your boyfriend later and asked him to contact his friends to say it was a couple's trip. You made it awkward in saying we're just not compatible to holiday anymore. Feels a bit final but you got what they wanted as they probably won't wish the holiday as a group again. I think you should apologize. And Delusion says, yeah, you're the asshole. It's called tact. And you could have worded it better saying you wanted to get away with just your boyfriend, not essentially calling the friends fat for simply enjoying food as part of their experience on vacation. And Stress Stud says, you're the asshole. I'm sorry that your Disney experience last time didn't go well because your boyfriend's friends had different priorities than you. But calling them fat from enjoying food on a vacation is just a shitty move. And Moral Prolapse says, You're the arsehole, there's nothing wrong with feeling the way you felt, but there was no call to be so direct and brutal. You should have just pulled your boyfriend aside and told him what was going on and that they weren't having fun. Can we go off by ourselves? That would have been fine. No hurt feelings. And we'll have one more from Bookish4269 saying, Not the arsehole. People saying you're rude seem to be missing the point. Your friends were incredibly rude to invite themselves along when your boyfriend mentioned a little getaway. It is simply not okay to presume to invite yourself along to someone's trip. It puts the person in the uncomfortable position of having to say, no, we don't want you to come. You should always assume that if someone wants you to come along, they will ask. Or if you really want to take a trip with them, you can plan one together. Your boyfriend is almost 30. His friends are certainly old enough to know better than to invite themselves along on a trip. What they did was kind of manipulative, frankly. They likely know your boyfriend wouldn't say no if they asked to come along. But when you, his girlfriend, spoke up and said, I prefer if you all didn't come, they should have said, ah, okay, private getaway, got it, and just dropped it. Instead, they responded like obtuse children with a, duh, but why? That put you even more on the spot and it is not surprising that you blurted out your frank opinion. In your position, I would have been so irritated by their rudeness, I wouldn't have been polite about it either. ETA, a lot of people in the comments don't seem to know the meaning of the word gluttonous. It is not a synonym for fat or lazy or slob. You didn't call them any of those things. If your description is accurate, they spent the whole weekend focused on going to eat at different restaurants while their girlfriends just sat there bored. They didn't actually go on rides or see any shows. They just wanted to eat. They claimed they wanted to go on rides with you and your boyfriend and didn't want you to leave them behind. But instead of doing so, they went to eat at yet another restaurant. That is gluttonous behavior, not to mention rude and selfish. Now, what do you guys make of today's stories? Did you enjoy them? 
If you did, please take a moment to click that like button as it just massively helps the video and helps this channel out. It just really shows your support. So thank you so much for doing so if you have and just for being here really. It just really does mean the world and it really changes things. So thank you so much for doing you. If you'd like to support the channel further, you can. But as always, as always, you cheeky so-and-so, no pressure to do so by clicking that join button down below for YouTube or clicking the link in the description for Patreon and joining up there. Thank you so much for your love, your support, and your time. It's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a bloody good weekend ahead of you. <laughs> See you later, guys. Much love.